This week, I learned an awful lot about the ACORN 8. Eight members of the group that joined because they wanted to help people. They say when they learned about some of the fraud and corruption, they just couldn't take it anymore. They tried to blow the whistle, but it seems like nobody would listen to them. I want to introduce you to two women that were in my office this afternoon. We had about a 45-minute conversation. We're going to try to break it down here in the next few minutes. Uh, they are um, they were once uh, national board uh, uh, once national board members um, of Acorn. They ran an organization after the CEO and CFO of the group were fired um, over a million-dollar embezzlement scandal. Then, when they tried to get the books open to find out about the corruption, one of them was fired from the board. Right, Karen? You were fired from the board? Terminated. Terminated, yeah, okay. Um, and, um, and Marcel Reed is joining me as well. This is Karen Inman. I want you to introduce to Karen and also Marcel Reed. Marcel is actually still working with ACORN. She is the chair of ACORN in Washington, D.C. Her board refuses to allow her to be removed, even though the national board wants her gone. Karen is, on the other hand, completely kicked out of the, as she said, terminated. She ran the legal arm of ACORN. Also with us today, later on in the program, is from the Washington Examiner, reporter Kevin Mooney. Okay, ladies, um, let me start with, well, let me just start with what we, what we just saw. I just saw two people that said, hey, I, just, I signed a bunch of uh, registration forms because the guy said to me that he was just trying to keep his job. Is this... Is this the kind of thing that is, is happening? Are, they, are, are the people who are going out and registered, are they threatened by the organization that you're going to lose your job unless you hit a certain quota? Certainly. Certainly that happens, yes. Uh, not only that, but they're not really paid a living wage. So, yes, that happens. And there are other things that we're very concerned about. Okay. I was told by the, the national spokesperson that... that, that, that there is no national policy of paying people for quotas. There is no anything like that. You just raised your eyebrows. There's that. You represented them legally, right? I mean, is there any kind of... No, I did not represent them legally. I was part of the legal kind of situation. Okay. I did not represent any of the union member, any of the members of ACORN or anything. Okay. I just was legal representative on the reorganization plan. Okay. So, no, I'm not... And you guys, when you guys got in, um, I mean, Marcella, I have to tell you, you are one brave woman. I can't, I mean, I don't even have all, you know, the Washington politics nonsense, you know, well, I do, actually, I do in this job. But, you know, in other jobs I've held, and I, I there are times that I just can't get up because I'm like, oh, I hate going in because of all the backstabbing and everything else. Here you are alone, refusing, and your board is protecting you too, right? Your board is saying, nope, we're not firing her. You've got the national acorn breathing down your neck. you got weasels in Washington breathing down your neck, and you ain't going anywhere. Well, you know, I have to thank my board. I mean, these are very courageous people. Um, and not only did I sign the complaint against acorn, but the previous... Um, Chair of Acorn in D.C., Pocahontas Outlaw, also signed the very same complaint. Name. It's a great name. Yeah. Um, the members of the board in D.C. have been stalwart in backing us because we have asked for three years to have the books opened. For three solid years we've what asked What kind that. of organization can't look where the, the chair and the board can't look at their own books? Well, primarily it's because the boards are not functional, they're ceremonial. And once they understood that they had a board form that would not serve in that position to be ceremonial, then there, there was a huge problem with the organization. What is a ceremonial board? ceremonial Why? board is a board that sits but has no actual authority. Why would anyone do that? Why? I mean, maybe I'm coming to this as a, as a cynic, and I am, but maybe I'm coming to this, but that seems like a front organization? I don't think the people that sit on the board thought it was a front organization. I, I think everyone came to this organization with the purest of intentions. No, no, no. I'm not saying that the people on the board or you felt that way. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way now at all? Like you're, wait a minute, am I just being used here? What, what, what kind, am I, are you providing cover? Yes. It's kind of a rubber stamp thing. We're going to tell you what to think and you're going to say, yeah, that's a good idea, and go along with it. And when the meetings are only half a day, 
and you bring in 51 people, they're not doing the kinds of work that they should be doing. Tell me, um, you had, you were sent to Capitol Hill on two, in 2008 and you... Um, there was a group of us that, that convened on Capitol Hill when the stimulus package was first introduced. This was under the Bush administration. I believe it was in September and I can go back into my notes and, and give you the exact dates. And at that time we were there to talk about the fact that we wanted the stimulus package to go forward. Um, and, and I was just concerned about that. Um, because at that time, Karen and I had served on the IMC, uh, which was the Interim Management Committee for ACORN. But, you, you know, there, there's just, uh, what we want to say very quickly, or what I want to say mm -hmm. very quickly is, we wanted an audit, just an audit. And when we, when we didn't have an audit, or couldn't get an audit, and ask for an audit, we were removed. And we want to know why we were removed. If everything is above board and we ask for an audit and we're members of the organization and supposedly directors of that organization, why would you remove us? What is the answer they've given you? We haven't gotten an answer. We've asked for the reasons. We've asked for their minutes. We've asked for all of these things. You've asked for minutes for the last three years. We get nothing, and we are stonewalled and not even responding. It to started that. with the Acorn Eight. How many are, the, are, are there now? We have far more than eight. We, I don't know how many because we gain people every day. But people in Acorn that says, I, I want my organization back. Right. So mm -hmm. what is it? I, I said to... Um, Marcella, I think I said to you earlier that this is all about votes, and you said, no, this is all about the money. Explain This that. is all about the money. This isn't, well, you can do it, Karen. Right. Basically what happens is the organization, I think, had a, a good message to begin with, and then they looked to see how much money they generated and how much power they got. And so instead of having it trickle down, uh, trickle up from the membership, which is what it's supposed to be, they looked and said, hmm, we can get X amount of dollars here. We'll convince our membership that this is what we should be working on. It seems to me that they are using me and people like me um, uh, by calling racists and everything else to generate outrage to help raise money. And then also they're using the lowest uh, of, of our society, using them and then throwing them to the lions and saying, you know, well, it was a rogue employee, which also helps them too, doesn't it? Of How? Course. Because it gives them cover. You know, it, it says consistently that, that, that the very same people that we're supposed to be enabling are the very same people that we sacrifice. So we can't have that kind of div divisiveness there. If we're out to help people, who works for $9 an hour or all less. day long or, or less? less? Who works for that kind of money? If you're empowered and if you're not an idealist a student or, or a retiree who has a, a very cushy life, you can't afford to work for that kind of money. So you already know where you're gathering people from like this. And you remember I spoke to you about, before about the J-curve? Uh -huh. People who've always been entitled to things in life know very quickly when they're being used. People who've never experienced anything in life except being used don't know when to blow the whistle. And why should they? Who's ever listened to them before when they've told the truth and blown the whistle? Is this why you guys, because when we talked this afternoon in my office, I mean, I just want the truth. I, I don't really care. It's great to help people, mm -hmm. but it seems like everybody, this is dirty. This is really dirty. Um, is this why you guys are doing this and staying in be because somebody has to? Yes, we want it corrected. We want it, it, it for example, when the embezzlement happened, we asked for the books, we asked for that to, to be taken care of. If they have nothing to hide, why can't they open up the books? Is it Conyers Gresh that said today that there was no reason? Did you hear this? Said that there's absolutely no reason they were going to do an investigation. I mean, they'll do steroids on baseball. But the, we have a statement? Where is it? Okay, here it is. Uh, based on my review of the information regarding the complaints against ACORN, I have concluded that a hearing on this matter appears to be unwarranted at this time. Well, you know, I was actually sitting in Congress when um, I heard um, Representative Conyers really push Gerald Nadler to have an investigation of ACORN. I heard him do it. It wasn't something that I think he was doing for the Why cameras. This? Why, and why now? Why is he backing off? Well, because Nadler was very resistant to there being an investigation of ACORN. He was very resistant. He showed it at that time, 
And I think what has happened, I have no way of proving it, is that I think that there was just a lot of pressure put on Conyers not to have this investigation. Okay. Um, the, the, the spider web is very, very deep. We're going to spend a few more minutes with, uh, with the two ladies here and uh, talk a little bit about that. And, and also, I've asked them to make a plea to somebody in Washington. I know people watch us in Washington, D.C. Somebody is watching us that is just going to say, you know what, I don't care. The truth is the most important. They'll make that plea coming up in just a second. Stand by.